It was the Great Depression. Around the world, jobs and money were scarce, and hope was in short supply. In the United States, the economy was in ruins. For millions of people, the 1930s were a time of despair. Yet, the American spirit survived. In fact, some of the greatest works of modern times were completed during the Depression. The Empire State Building in New York, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, and the biggest of them all, Hoover Dam, on the border of Arizona and Nevada. The U.S. government wanted to build the dam to harness the powerful Colorado River and use its water to produce electricity for Arizona, Nevada, and Southern California. A contract for almost $49 million, astronomical at the time, was awarded to a group of companies including Bechtel, and construction began in 1931. The late Stephen Bechtel Sr. recalled years later how the project captured the imagination of the world. There was not much other work, big work going on at that time, but also the fact that there was a, was a depression and there weren't many jobs around. People just flocked, wanted to come there from all over the world and did come from all over the world. Before the dam could be built, workers had to blast and drill tunnels in the solid rock walls of the Black Canyon to divert the river, an enormous project in itself. Then came the main event, pouring 4.4 million cubic yards of concrete for the dam, enough to pave a two-way road from New York to San Francisco. Concrete heats up as it cures. If all the concrete for the dam had been poured at once, it would have taken 125 years to cure. So instead, concrete was poured in individual blocks, one atop another, and curing was hastened with an innovative cooling technique. And we poured concrete for three years steady. They ran small pipes throughout the concrete as it was being poured, and then ran ice water through that. It was a cooling process, which was later on adopted for all massive concrete, particularly in hot areas around the world. All told, more than 15,000 men and women worked on Hoover Dam, completing the enormous project under budget and two years ahead of schedule. On September 30th, 1935, at the official dedication, President Franklin Roosevelt called the project a great feat of mankind. He told the crowd, I came, I saw, I was conquered. Today, Hoover Dam still has the power to inspire, and it's easy to see why. The massive structure is 726 feet high, 1,244 feet across at the top. It's 660 feet wide at the base and weighs an astounding 6.6 .6 million tons. And then there's Lake Mead, which fills the canyon behind the dam. Impressive in its own right, the lake was the first national recreational area in the United States and is still the largest reservoir in the country with a capacity of more than 9 trillion gallons. Hoover Dam and Lake Mead comprise a modern wonder, so it's no wonder that nearly a million visitors each year take tours offered by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. I believe Hoover Dam continues to inspire people 75 years after its construction because it's an enduring feature for this landscape and for the Southwest. It not only inspired people of that generation, but will inspire people for generations to come. For Bechtel, Hoover Dam was a defining moment. In 1931, the company already was more than 30 years old, but it had never undertaken anything on such a scale. Hoover Dam was a big bet that paid off. The Hoover Dam project and our role in it was a uh, major platform for advancing on to other big, pro bigger projects even. There's no question it was a major stepping stone. So it gave us and I think the others a pretty good basis to keep going and growing. It was an important project for all of us. Bechtel went on to become a global leader in engineering and construction and earned a reputation for doing mega projects, jobs considered too big and complex for other companies to handle. Projects like BART, the rapid transit system that carries more than 325,000 passengers each day in the San Francisco Bay Area. Jubail, an industrial city in Saudi Arabia built from the sand up, and the high-speed one-rail project which brought high-speed train travel to the United Kingdom. The list goes on. But in any discussion of mega projects, there is one that people remember best. One that draws visitors who weren't even born when it was built. One that helped stave off a depression and set Bechtel on the road to greatness.